Good morning and welcome to our presentation on hydrotherapy, nature's remedial agents. And who created everything in nature? The Lord God. Amen. And so we are going to look at what He has given to us for our health and healing. Mm -hmm. God's healing ways. He has three primary ways and we're going to look at what they are. The first ones are the principles of health reform. So that includes everything from the way that we eat, the way that we dress, the way that we live. We talked yesterday a little bit about country living. Those principles will tend to our health and happiness. Uh, nature's simple remedi remedies. These are things that God has provided, like the foods that we eat specifically, the, the character quality, the qualities in these foods that tend to promote like vitamin C and its anti-inflammatory properties um, and also simple home remedies like hydrotherapy that we'll look at more closely and of course cooperation with divine agencies depending on God for all of our health. We're going to look specifically at what are those health reforms, the laws of health and that includes, there's several acronyms that can be used to describe these uh, health laws and even some include more than this but this is one way of saying it, God's plan. And it says the first one is godly trust. We must trust in God that He will be our sustaining grace in everything. And once we trust in Him like we looked at yesterday, then it's without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Why? Because He loves to bless us and it's His pleasure to bless us and to give us health. But if we don't trust Him, if we won't go to the Word of God to see what He has to say, then we won't receive from Him those gifts. So first trusting in God that we will obey Him in all the laws of health. Open air. So we're in a, we have a blessing right here. We feel a gust of winds. It's, the open air gives us pure oxygen that we need, daily exercise, sunlight, plenty of rest, lots of water, always temperate, and nutrition. We could spend hours on each one of these topics, uh, but they are so crucial to our health and happiness. And the Bible tells us that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and it's a lack of knowing how to properly work them. We might know these acronyms and know these things, but unless we really understand what each one is saying and means, then we can perish even if we have these things memorized God's plan without knowing the deeper things so studying for ourselves and understanding and hopefully we'll get a chance to look at those in depth but today we are going to focus on simple remedies and this is an introduction to hydrotherapy and I really like the name simple home remedies because it indicates that this is something for everyone that you don't have to be a doctor or have a PhD to do as I do not but we can learn how our body works as each one of us must learn we are responsible to God to glorify him in our bodies to honor him by how we use our bodies so we must understand how they work so we're going to look today a little bit about how our bodies work and how we can use hydrotherapy to uh, help them to function properly. But first, a history lesson on what hydrotherapy is. Has anybody ever heard the word hydrotherapy before? Well, yes, I see some hands. Has anybody ever had a hydrotherapy treatment done to them? Okay, a few. Well, how many of you have drinking a glass of water? Maybe even this morning. Well, then you have participated in an act of hydrotherapy and you have been blessed by one of God's remedies. Drinking a glass of water is just about as simple as it can get. And is that very hard, a hard thing to do? Well, some may say they don't like the taste, but really, in all honesty, it is very easy to do and it is very beneficial for our health. So that um, is an example. But where does the in depth hydrotherapy come from well the word hydro what does that mean water and therapy is a means of using it for a healing or for a um, treatment okay so we see here 
uh, from a book that Dr. Agatha Thrash put together from the dawn of recorded history various baths have been used for the treatment of disease the Babylonians the Egyptians the Greeks and the Romans all used various treatment baths in Sparta hydrotherapy became compulsory what does that mean that means everybody had to do it it wasn't an option a law was passed requiring every citizen to take a cold bath frequently. So they saw the benefits even there in Sparta. More recently, or in, uh, even in the, in the not so recent past, what story does this make you think of? What's, yes, this is Naaman. And so here we see even in the Bible a story of hydrotherapy. And what was the story? He, he was a man who had leprosy. Yes, he had leprosy. And he um, was, he didn't know what to do. He tried all the things that his local physicians had and nothing helped. It, he was supposed to be put outside. He was quarantined because it was very contagious. But the little maid, we know the little maid told him, go to Elisha. And so when he came to Elisha, what did Elisha tell him to do? to go and bathe in the river Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean and then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of little children and he was clean so we see here was it the Jordan you think that that clean that made him whole that healed him no, because many people had leprosy before and we've never heard a story like this where he was healed. So we know that he was working with that first law that we saw, godly trust. When he obeyed God, God was able to use a natural means to heal him. And that's always God uses these simple things that we can point the glory back to him. And now we see this principle, why hydrotherapy? And we see in the Bible that it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And God commanded that we would not eat the flesh of the animal, the, the blood of the animals, but only the flesh, because the blood was representing of something deeper. It was to make an atonement for sin. And so we see in the Bible the principle that the, the blood represents the life. And even in our own bodies, the blood, if we cut off the circulation to a certain part of our body, what will happen? If I cut, wrapped a, sh a rope around my arm and tied it as tight as you could tie it, Nigel, what would happen? What color would my hand turn? It would turn white maybe first, maybe blue, and then it would finally die and shrivel up, right? Because it has no blood to it. It has no life going to it. And so the similarly, in hydrotherapy, we use this principle. The, the blood contains all the nutrients we need for life. And so when we understand this, we are able to then bring the circulation to the proper, in the proper way to the areas of the body that need it the most. Now, more recently, in history, we see this man here. Who here has heard of Kellogg's Corn Flakes? Yes? Oh yes. Well, he actually had a brother named Dr. John Harvey Kellogg. And a little over a hundred years ago, people from all over the world went to Battle Creek Sanitarium where Dr. John Harvey Kellogg successfully treated serious infections and many other conditions using hydrotherapy. Kellogg was considered by many to be the greatest physician of his time. And he, even great men and kings would come there to be treated by him because it worked. He, they didn't come to be fooled or to just waste their time, but because they saw that something was happening at the little sanitarium in Battle Creek that wasn't so little. Okay, so what are some popular uses of hydrotherapy today? We, the words colonic, jacuzzi, steam bath, water pick, ice packs, or water aerobics may be familiar names to you, and those are all forms of hydrotherapy. They're uses of water as a modality for treating different conditions. And today, 
we're going to look at the rationale. Now, how does it work? Well, it increases circulation of the blood. And we already understand that the life of the flesh, the nutrients that all of our cells need, are in the blood. And so, it increases circulation of the blood that makes the ability of that nutrients to get to where it needs to go. It stimulates the immune system to combat disease. There are different uh, hydrotherapy treatments that actually trigger the white blood cells to be more active and that will fight off the pathogens in your body that are causing um, some maybe an autoimmune disease, cancer, these different things. The white blood cells can go in and take care of those pathogens. So it stimulates the immune system, we'll look at that more closely, and it rids the body of toxins. How many of you have done some sweating in your lifetime? Yes, and I've done a little bit more here while I've been in the Philippines than I had previously, and it's been a blessing. It's been ridding my body of toxins, and that is one of the main ways to do cleansing through our bodies. One of the biggest organs of your body is your skin and it has all those tiny little pores and by using hydrotherapy we can heat the body to help it to rid the body of toxins, stimulating circulation and flushing out those bad guys through the skin. What are our other eliminating organs along with our skin? Is the liver and the kidneys and there are other, the lymph also help with that. And these systems are improved with the use of hydrotherapy. So we are going to look at, I wish I could quickly go back. If you cannot look at the screen, can you tell me children, what are the different forms of water? We have every, everything has a gas state, a solid state, and a liquid state. When it comes to uh, water, what do we call those? What's the uh, the liquid state of water. It's water. Okay, what's the gas state? What do we call that? Steam. And what's the solid state? Ice. Ice. So hydrotherapy takes advantage of all of these different forms of this uh, element in nature, of water, of H2O. So we have liquid, solid, and gas. Now, how does it work on the body? One of the things that we said was that it promotes, it stimulates circulation. Okay, so um, one of the actions that it has in our body, how many of you have ever washed your clothes with very hot water? Yes? Or wash the dishes with very hot water? Or, and you put your hands in, and what color do your hands turn afterwards? They turn red, exactly. What the heat does to your blood vessel, this is a, a slice of your blood vessel. And what the heat does is it actually makes your blood vessels to dilate. And so more blood will rush to that area. And so when you have your hands in the hot water, for that time and they turn red, that's why, because blood is going to that area. Your veins have dilated. We call it vasodilation. What do we call it? Vasodilation. Exactly. Now, have you ever put your hands, have you ever taken an ice bottle out of the freezer and it's so cold, what color do your fingers turn? They might, they turn red eventually, yes. But initially, they may turn a little white or pink uh, or, you know, pale. And when you are, when I live in Maine and it gets very cold in the winter, and if I'm outside and I get cold, my hands will turn white and get cold. And maybe some of you, maybe some of you have people, you know, people who have cold hands and their hands are often white. And that's because they have no blood, no circulation. So we know. The, the first primary reaction of it is vasoconstriction. What is it called? Vasoconstriction. So the, the vessels uh, constrict and it makes it so the blood goes away from that area of the body. Uh, and then the secondary reaction, as my sister said, is that it will turn red. It says, uh-oh, there's a problem here. We need to bring some more energy. So then it will turn red and try to bring the circulation back to that area. 
Okay? So here we have a little diagram of it, of the physiology. The hydrostatic effect is what it's called, is the heat draws the blood to the surface, causing your skin to turn red. And then the, the cold, the primary action, is it drives the blood to the interior, away from the skin. And the secondary action, as we said, is that it drives the blood back to the surface to say, hold on, there's a problem, we need circulation. So then it comes back and then it will turn red after some time. <laughs> so what did we call it when we have the, the veins that get bigger, when we put it in the hot water, it's called vaso? <laughs> dilation and when it gets smaller it's called vaso constriction very good okay here is a sample of some hydrotherapy treatments some different ones and we're gonna look at the first four but so you know that there are more there's many and you can even make them once you know the the theory behind how it works you can then even adapt it to what your surroundings and your needs are well, we're going to look at, there's hot, hot foot bath, fomentations, heating compress, and hot half baths are the ones we'll look at today. But there's also Russian steam bath, contrast shower bath, we'll look at that one a little. The sits bath, steam inhalation, ice massage, wet sheet pack, salt glow, neutral bath, short cold bath, cold mitten friction, and irrigation. You can do irrigations to your nose or your ears, those, those um, passages. Okay, so first we're going to look at a hot foot bath, and I'm going to need some volunteers. And let's see, I think maybe we can have a volunteer of a mother and a child, and maybe, maybe I can call on Abby. Mm -hmm. I know we kind of ask some people ahead of time to do different things, so... Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to this one. We will go on to... Well, the way I'm set up is really to start off with the hot half bath, uh, with the foot bath, so let's see. Maybe we can do... Is she coming? Okay, good. Would really like to. S Oopsies. Okay. Good. So, if you want to come on up here and help me. Mm -hmm. <coughs> come on up. So, you're going to need a few things for your hot foot bath. And this is our setup, so can you help me to name? Come on up. Hi. And why don't you go ahead and tell us your names? I don't know if we have. Uh, I'm Mary Jane Bernales. Mary Jane? Kurt Mam Bernales. And Kurt. Kurt. Okay, thank you, ma'am. And Kurt. Okay. So, wonderful. So, the first things. Oopsies. We're a little bit. Okay, so Sister Mary Jane, tell me, what are the things that you see here that we need? We need uh, a blanket, yes, and then a, we need also a blanket and a next one, a sheet, mm -hmm. and uh, water. Yes, a pail with water some water, and then maybe a cloth, towel. a towel. Very good. So those are some things that we need. And of course we need a patient who is um, not feeling well. And what are the, some of the things that we might use this for? We can read on the screen the indications would include if they had a cold or a flu or a headache, congestion, and abdominal cramps or pelvic congestion. Okay, so we can have um, our friend Kurt. You just have, you can just sit down right there and put your feet in. Now, before the person sits down, you have the bucket filled with some hot water. Mm -hmm. And then, you're going to have him test the water. Does it feel too hot? Well, there's no water in it right now, so of course it's not going to feel too hot, but he would 
he would be hot enough to his toleration. Okay, and then the, th and the next thing that we'll do is we will wrap him with the sheet and the blanket. So we'll take the sheet and wrap it all the way around him, including the hot foot bath. Mm -hmm. Up around his neck. And then I have here a little towel that can wrap around his neck again. So unfold it, open it all the way up, open it all the way up. The long way. And then it can wrap right around his neck. And what that's going to do is to keep the heat of the hot foot bath in and it's also going to keep the air from getting in and also if he's going to sweat it'll keep it from dripping down but he'll be sweating on the inside too now we're going to wrap the blankets around him and we're using two small blankets since we don't have a big one so we have one up here and we have one down below as well and we just want to insulate him do you see how well we're wrapping him well because what did we learn that the heat does? Vasodilation, yes? So we are, di we are going to cause his blood vessels in his feet where the water is, where the hot water is, to dilate those blood vessels. And that's going to improve the circulation of his whole body. And we heard, we, we were told like, we're gonna say he has a headache or um, so, what happens in a headache is you have a congestion of the blood. It's focused there, a, a congestion headache. And so we're going to keep the head cool. And so we have also here a bucket. We'll put that down. And this is filled with cold water or ice water. And what she will do is she will just get the rag wet and wring it out a little bit and then keep his head cool the whole time so that way his head doesn't get too warm and he stays comfortable. Mm -hmm. And do you think that if he's wrapped up like this, he's going to be hot or cold? He's going to get hot, right? And he's going to start sweating. And that's one of the ways that you know the treatment has started. That's when you start your timer and you go for about 20 minutes after he starts to sweat. And af and, but during this time, your hot water in the feet actually will get cooled down. So we want to continue adding some hot water. So we have a pot of water on the stove and you'll come over to the pot of water and you will take your little pitcher and you'll dip some in and then you'll come over to the feet and just unwrap the feet area. And that's okay if it falls. We'll just try to balance it up on his head and keep him nice and comfortable. So just unwrap the feet area. So we go like this, just his feet so that the rest of him stays warm. Mm -hmm. Good, he's really wrapped up very well. That's excellent. And because this water is going to be very hot, maybe, um, maybe too hot, we want to put your hand between the water and his feet because our hands can handle more heat than his feet can and that way if we we're going to burn anyone we would burn ourselves and not the patient but you'll be very careful you'll say slide your feet over to one side so you'll tell him and then you'll put your hand in and you'll pour the water in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay until it's as hot as he can tolerate it okay he says that's enough so we'll wrap him back up and you might add water every five minutes. So you'll be busy, but do you think he's going to, we already mentioned he's gonna start sweating, right? Cause he's all wrapped up. So we want to replenish that water. So you wanna have a cup and it's nice to have a little straw too. And he will continue to uh, drink water. Okay, it looks like he is feeling much better. He wants to get out of here. So in order to finish the treatment properly before he goes, Remember, all the blood is in his feet. And so if he stands up too quickly, because we dilated, we want to end it with the cold. So just have a seat for me. And we would pour the water over his feet, over the bucket. So this is the cold water now. And we'll lift up your feet out of the bucket. Lift up your feet. You're doing excellent. And then we'll just pour the water over your feet the cold on the top of the foot and on the bottom of the foot. And then we dry his feet very well. 
We want to then wrap him up in a blanket and a towel. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank You've you been a Mary. big help. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Mary Jane. And wrap him up very well so that all, you know, he's sweating, his pores are open, and we want him to continue to sweat. Because what does sweating do? It releases the toxins if he has a cold or if he has anything, and that's going to help his blood to continue circulating, bringing the good nutrients everywhere, and to just continue. Depending on what uh, the issue was that he had, if he has a headache, it's bringing the blood away. If he had a cold, it's stimulating good circulation and bringing good, healthy blood through the cleansing organs and back to the places that need it again. So that's our, our first treatment. This one is very useful for many things. If you have any problem, if you're not sure what it is, your tonsils are swollen maybe, you can try a hot foot bath and it shouldn't do any harm. The only time that you want to be cautious with this treatment is, do you see where it says contraindications? And it says diabetes. Now tell me, can diabetics feel very well in their feet? No, they can't. They, their circulation, their, their nerves are compromised. So, we need to uh, be careful that if we're putting them in hot water, that they will, um, we will be in control of how hot the water gets. So, you need to be very careful and maybe avoid that. And Berger's disease, this is a disease where the dilation in the legs is compromised. And if it's compromised, then they won't be able to dilate the blood vessels in their feet and it will put a strain on them because you're asking them to do something that they cannot do because of that disease. So you want to be careful in those two indications. Um, and so, but every other time, as long as you keep the head cool, there's three things in uh, hydrotherapy that you want to remember. Keep the head cool, the feet warm, and the stomach empty. Can you say it with me? The head cool, the feet warm, and the stomach empty. Okay, so it's best to do these treatments on an empty stomach, but if you need to, then you can do it after eating maybe something small, but you wanna give time. So if they feel nauseous or anything, then it will be easier on them. Okay, so that is our first treatment. We're gonna go on and look at a hot half bath or a fever treatment. Now this one is similar to the hot to the foot bath in that it's a heating treatment. You're heating the body up, you're promoting good circulation and good um, good perspiration. You're also in the case of a fever, fever is your friend as we say and what it does is you have one-third of your white blood cells that are working all the time. And then you have two-thirds that are on the reserve. So they're like your soldiers, and one-third are around the country making sure, they're like the policemen, making sure everything is safe. But two-thirds are on reserve for when there's an emergency. And the signal, the trumpet that's being blown to tell them there's an emergency is a fever. And that is that signal that gets the white blood cells into action. And so, by stimulating like a fever, in a way, controlled of course, it will help your white blood cells to fight off the disease. So I'm going to need another volunteer to come so that we can look at what that might be like. So of course, the first thing that you're going to need is some kind of bathtub or a place for them to uh, be able to get into some water. So we're going to pretend like these two chairs are our bathtub. You want to climb in there for me? Just sit right up there with your feet over here. Wonderful. Okay. So he's in the bathtub, but you'll notice for most at least grown-ups, they will stick out of the bathtub somewhat. Or if you only have a tank and you can't get all the way in, then what you can do is you take a towel and you're just going to drape this over his shoulders and if it was an adult his knees might be sticking up out of the water you'll do it on the front sorry so just on the front of him 
So he's covered up, and that's going to keep the heat in if he's sticking out of the water. So when the wind blows, it doesn't cool him down. So we already have the tub filled with water. We have a thermometer in the tub to tell us how hot the water should be. And the water, you want to start out, depending on your person, and for the first treatment, right around the temperature 104. Okay? Water temperature starts at 104. Again, we have a bucket of cool water with a washcloth. And we have a pitcher. And we're going to have a oral thermometer so that we can check his temperature and make sure that it doesn't get too hot. And we're going to look at our list quickly what this is good for. The indications, what it's used for is things like colds, flus, general congestion, pain, muscle, pelvic, back, persistent coughs, poor circulation, cancer, lupus, uh, also eczema or psoriasis. It relieves pain and stiffness, fatigue, and congestion of internal organs. It can break a fever of the body temperature by elevating the temperature one degree above the fever temperature. Uh, and it stimulates the immune mechanisms that we already talked about. So that's why it's helpful in cases of cancer and things because the immune system is then the white blood cells are able to go and fight off the cancer cells. Okay, so we have him. He sits in there so comfortably. Now mom is going to take the cold rag when he starts to sweat and damp his head. But you want to make sure that you don't do this too soon. If he's not hot yet, you don't want to slow down the treatment. But if he's ready for it, then she's going to take the pitcher. This is going to be our, our hot, our cold. So just in the tub, there's hot water. And she's going to take the water and pour it over his shoulders if they're sticking up out of the water to keep him continually staying wet. So you can pretend like you're pouring the water over him. But this one's the ice water, so she's not pouring ice water. She's pouring the hot water that's in here, OK? So you just pour the water on him so he stays nice and warm. Now again, we want to be checking his temperature and checking his pulse. So we'll take his, we'll have him stick his hand out every about five minutes. And here is, gonna, here's a little uh, diagram of how you want to be checking. First, remember we said the water temperature, we want to start at 104. And then his pulse, we check it counting how many beats you feel for one minute. And this is an example, maybe it started out at 78. And then his oral temperature, maybe that started out at 98.7. This is Fahrenheit, so uh, we'll have to convert that over and see what that might look like. Um, and then after uh, a little while, um, you're going to check it again every five minutes, making sure that the heart rate doesn't get above one right around 130, 140, you want to be cautious with that. Now how would we, how would we, what would we do if it gets higher? Well you might have an ice bag or another cold rag, another washcloth, and then you could take that if his heart rate gets too high and just put that in the ice water and put it right above his chest. Or an ice bag works very well so you don't have to continue getting it wet, you just put that ice bag right on his chest if it gets too high but you want to make sure that it stays below right around 130, 120 is a, a good safe place. And then after uh, he's in there for, after you raise his temperature about two, two degrees, that's good. But if you um, look at our diagram, it, it raises the temperature to about 102.6. And when in the lifestyle center where I work, we seek to get the temperature right around 102.6. And that's safe as long as you're keeping the head cool. And um, you just continue to keep him right around 102 for about 20 minutes. And then after 20 minutes, when he's had his temperature elevated, he, he may be, um, you have to encourage him to just breathe nicely and easily. If uh, he gets too uncomfortable or anything, you just simply lower the temperature of the water and then when it's all done, after he's been in there for about 20 minutes, you've been giving him plenty of water to drink between the times when you read his temperature. 
and then finally keeping his head cool, continuing to keep him warm, and adding hot water as you need to keep the water temperature right around 104. Now it's all done, so we're gonna drain the tub, we're gonna take off the towels, and we're always going to end our treatments, most often, with cold. To close the pores, just like we did for a hot, hot foot bath, we poured the cold over the feet, and what does the cold do? Vasoconstriction. Very good. So we're going to end by doing a cold pour over him or a cold mitten friction with the washcloth. Either one will do. So we'll do that all over his legs, his feet, his arms, his back, his chest, or you can do the pour. And then we'll dry him off. And then we want him to rest. So we have a bed over here situated where he'll lay down for anywhere from a half an hour to an hour and then afterwards he'll continue to sweat. You want to keep him bundled up because that sweating, what is it doing? It's getting rid of toxins. Very good. And it shows that the fever is continuing to work. The white blood cells are active. So after he rests, then he can continue and he'll feel much better. I just got the privilege of giving this to my nephew when he was feeling sick on a vacation. But after, and you know, it's awful to be sick on a vacation, but uh, he was feeling much better afterwards and he got to run and play again with his cousins. So thank you very much for your help in showing the hot half bath. Okay, now we're going to look at fomentations, okay? And who will be my helpers for fomentations? Mm -hmm. Do I have some volunteers? Mm -hmm. Okay, well we're going to look at what is it that the fomentations are beneficial for? It's good for chest congestion, asthma, pneumonia, insomnia, pain, sprains, contusions, inflammations, and the contraindications are things like abscesses or skin lesions or rashes or heart disease. And um, the first few, it's, it's chest congestion and these things because a fomentation is basically the means of applying heat to a localized area. Okay, so we're going to do, thank you Marlon. And tell me your name. What's your name? Well, what's your name, Mom? Madeline. 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 And Madel. Yes, thank you so much. And it's going to be very simple. You can just take a seat right here. Sit down. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the there's you can do fomentations on any part of the body. We're going to demonstrate them on the chest. Um, not directly like but this is an example of how you would do it there and for something like a cold or um, a chest congestion when they have a cough and they can't get the phlegm out this is wonderful for improving circulation to the lungs it's good for asthma and different lung conditions pneumonia so the first thing what did we learn that heat does it dilates yes vasodilation so you're going to, fomentations is a way of using steam or heat to apply heat uh, to a specific area of the body. So you can take a towel, depending on the size of the body part that you're going to be um, doing the fomentation on. And for an adult, a regular sized towel is a nice size. You can do it like that or, or like this. And then you want to get it damp, damp enough like how it would be at the end of a rinse cycle on your washing machine, not the rinse, the spin cycle. So after it's been spun and it just has that much water. And then you're going to put it into a big pot with a steam tray of some sort. You can use anything that you have. So it just has a little bit of water and then a tray. And you put the, the uh, towel in until the steam heats it. And steam is much hotter than boiling water, right? And you can get a burn very easily, so you must be careful in handling it. So, Madeline, you can come and help me. So, since it's so hot, you'll need something as a barrier. So you'll take another towel, and we're going to come over here. Let's not trip anyone. And 
The first thing that you need is to have a place for the child or the patient to lay down. Underneath our, um, our blanket we have, I just want to show you, there is a plastic to keep the bed dry. So you can use anything from um, a plastic shower curtain or a plastic bag that you cut open to keep the bed and the mattress from getting wet. Then you put down a sheet so they're not laying directly on the plastic. You're going to put your first fomentation down on the back. So you are going to first address both the back and the front of the chest. Then you have, Madel, if you will lay down with your head on the pillow. Mm -hmm. And we'll put her feet down. We can, we can put her under the sheet. That's kind of warm. <laughs> but, and then you'll take one towel and spread it with a few layers, maybe four layers, that's a good. So fold it so that you have four layers or so. And then you can lay that over the chest. Mm -hmm. And how many layers you have is just dependent on how hot your fomentation pad is. So after she's put that down, she's ready for her fomentation. And she's going to, depending on how hot it is, you might need a second towel. So she'll carefully come to the pot and take out the fomentation. Okay, she'll have like tongs or a glove, a heating pad. She'll take it out and only unfold it as much as she needs. So uh, Madel isn't very big, so she can leave it like this. Put it inside of a towel to carry it because it's steaming hot. Mm -hmm. And then carry it over and place it on top of the chest. Mm -hmm. And again, it just depends on how hot it is. When Reverse. Yes, you can place it the other way. Because there's a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I will show you how I like to fold my towels in such a way that it is very convenient for placing the fomentation pad in. Well, you take it like this and then you fold it in thirds. Okay? So you see what we have then is something, you can just pick up that whole piece, everything, the towels. And then you have like a little place right here, when you fold it back, to place the foam and patient pad, and then cover it. And you can fold two towels in such a way, if that's not enough, those two layers, because remember when we fold it in third, that leaves two layers as a barrier, and one layer to cover afterwards, you can put a second towel beneath the first one. Okay, so now we're getting into the theory of the contrast. And I like to do the contrast treatment before, but here we are. So what we do for this treatment, it's a contrast treatment, which means we're using both theories of the hot that dilates and the cold that constricts. So she has that on there. It's doing vasodilation, but now after three minutes, we're going to exchange and do cold, okay? So how many minutes? Three. Three minutes. So we have a bucket of ice water here. We can set it right next to the bed. We're going to have a cloth for uh, the cold, and you want it to be the size of the area that you need. If it's too big, you fold it in half, but so then you use that, you'll get that wet in your cold water, wring it out pretty well, and then you will exchange it. You will take the hot off and put the cold on. So you just take it off. Mm -hmm. You can put that back in our pot so it continue heating. Mm -hmm. And then this is going to go actually directly on the skin. So we need to remove also the towel and you pretending that the shirt is her skin. And so you're going to do that friction. Oh, but we are just doing how many minutes? 30 seconds for the cold. So how much was it for the hot? Three minutes. Three minutes. And then for the cold, it's 30 seconds. So it's just a brief cold to give a contrast the vasodilation for the hot and then the vasoconstriction for the cold. So 30 seconds, you're looking at your watch and after 30 seconds, you're going to take it off 
and put another fomentation pad on that has already been steaming. You want about three or four fomentation pads always in the steamer so that they're always getting ready uh, because it will take time for them to heat up and so that you will be prepared for the next one. So you get ready, you have, you can even already have your fomentation over here ready. So cover her again after drying her. Cover her, put the next fomentation pad on. Mm -hmm. And of course it's very hot so you may wrap it in a towel on your way over to her so it won't lose the steam. So you wrap it in a towel and you put it on and you're always communicating with your patient and saying um, is it too hot? You know, is there any area that's burning? And the bony areas will be more sensitive and, and then may burn. So you can simply put another little washcloth in that spot where it might be burning. Um, and then how long will we leave this on? Three minutes and then we'll exchange it with the cold. And I'll show you if I'm doing this treatment, if you're doing it on your child, then modesty may not be such an issue. But if you're doing it for a friend, if you would just maybe step to the side a little bit and I will show them. The way that I like to do it to keep the patient always modest, when I remove the fomentation pad, I have this towel here and I have my cold. I've wrung it out and then I simply grab the corners of this one and the corners of the other one and then I can switch it over and she always remains covered and modest. Then I do the cold friction for 30 seconds. For how long? 30 seconds. And what is it doing? Vasoconstriction. Good. And then when I'm ready for my hot again, I might take just a, a different towel to dry her off first. To dry her. Put that in the cold. Dry. Get my next one. And exchange it again. And then I'm ready to put on the fomentation that has been ready. Okay. And then she says, after how many exchanges shall we do? We want to do maybe between four and seven times. I like seven because it reminds me of the story of Naaman and how many times he needed to dip. So seven exchanges, but if the person is frail or, you know, fatigues easily, this is, um, it takes energy to do these treatments. The body is working very hard. The blood, uh, the heart is pumping uh, blood to, to get the oxygen rich blood to the areas. And we mentioned our contraindications included heart disease, where the, the heart is compromised. It cannot pump so efficiently anymore. So we want to be cautious in those, especially placing heat over the heart because that could cause too much strain. Okay, thank you. So we finished. You can at the same time of this treatment do a hot foot bath if you have a small, um, a small basin. You can have her bend her knees up, bend your knees, and put a basin at her feet. And so at the same time, and that will make it even more powerful of a treatment if she's feeling very sick. All right, so that's it. How do we always end our treatment? With cold. So we'll do the cold mitten friction to her chest, and then we'll have her sit up. There, I didn't mention to you, but we actually, when we're doing, I did mention, but I want to remind you, we have a fomentation applied to her back, to her spine, and that's going to help uh, very much as well with the back of the lungs and also the spine is where your nerves are all uh, connecting up to your brain and that helps to relieve tension. It just feels wonderful even just if you're feeling stressed. But that hot fomentation, so again we have that our towel folded and a fomentation would be inside and you're communicating with her making sure that that one doesn't get too hot either. But that one we don't change. We put one down for the whole treatment so she's not getting up and down and up and down. It's just a hot one and then at the end of the treatment she sits up. We do the cold on her back. We do the cold on her arms and her legs with the mitten, cold mitten friction. And then she can actually go and rest for another 30 minutes to an hour. Thank you. And then rinse off. And of course before each treatment what is the most important of all of the eight laws of health? 
trust in divine power, that we are trusting in God. So we want to pray with our child or our friend or the patient that we're helping before each treatment. And then, of course, providing lots of water. Okay. The next thing that we're going to take a look at is the heating compress. Okay, this one's another exciting and interesting one. Yeah, Nigel, if, if you want to come right up and um, if mom's not here, that's all right. We can work together. Okay. And I'll just do it with you. So the heating compress, what it is indicated for is things like sore throat, laryngitis, chest cold, whooping cough, bronchitis, headaches. And the contradictions would be for a chilled person or if they have skin lesions that require being dry. Okay, come right on over. So the way that this works is, again, like the fomentations, you can do it to any part of your body, just depending. You would just change the way, the size of what you're doing and how it looks. So if you're doing it to the throat, you would start with having a small cloth and then a plastic and a blanket, whatever is appropriate if you're doing for a sore throat. But we're going to pretend like we are doing it for uh, a, for whooping cough or for, or for chest congestion. So the things that you will need is first a t-shirt that's the size of the person. So we'll pretend like it's your t-shirt that you're wearing. It's the perfect size for you. Um, and it can be a fitted shirt. And then you're gonna need some ice water you're going to put the, his t-shirt in the ice water and wring it out very well so it's not dripping. The next thing that you will need is a plastic bag and this is going to work like an insulator and you're going to cut uh, arm holes and a head hole. So we're going to put that on. See there's a... And this will insulate it. It will keep the, the wet in and keep it from drying out. So you're gonna put your head through this hole, okay? Ready? And then put your arms up through these holes here on the side that we've made. And so I made them a little bit small because I knew that they would rip when we put them in and I didn't want them to get too big. Mm -hmm. Good, so we see that's covering him. Then we take something warm and we will wrap him and the more fitted it is, the, more, the better insulation it will be. So then we just put this one on over that. And we zip it up. And he can go to sleep like this. And he'll go to sleep and all night, what will happen? What is the primary action of the cold? Constricts. But what was the secondary reaction? Dilation, because the body says, uh-oh, there's something, there's a problem here. We need to send some blood to that area to warm it up. So if he has congestion uh, or he needs to get the blood circulating in his lungs, then we'll put this cold compress on. It will begin the body to bring circulation to that area and warm it up. And so with the plastic, it's going to keep it insulated so he'll actually get quite warm and maybe in the middle of the night get hot. And it's all right if, if your child were to wake up and say, I'm hot and wants to take it off, you can take it off and dry them off really well and put something warm on to continue. But they can sleep the whole night with this on. Now we also mentioned for the, the throat, if somebody, uh, like public speakers, often use this one, they will, if their throat gets sore from speaking a lot and they need to um, just bring that good healing blood to their vocal cords to help everything to, well, not the vocal cords, but just to their throat if it gets um, sore, then they'll put a, a cold strip of cloth, cotton is the best, and wrap that around their throat. Then a strip of plastic, you can just use a plastic bag and you can cut it or you can leave it and then put that around and fasten it with a pin and then put like a scarf on or some kind of cloth. Um, wool is nice, it's a good insulator and it's good with the wet. It doesn't let the, the wetness out because the wool has naturally some waterproofness from the um, lanolin that's in the wool. So that's it, then you take it off after you're done. Wonderful. You can just rip it off. <laughs> 
There you go. Wonderful. And that is, whew, <laughs> that is our heating compress for you. Mm -hmm. Working with the <laughs> Thank you very much, Nigel, for your help. All right. Now let's see, we have one more treatment and a few moments of time that we're going to... Oh, why would you not want to do it to a chilled person, this treatment? Because they aren't able to heat up the uh, compress. Remember, you're starting it with ice water. And if they are naturally cold and they're not able to heat it up, or if they're already frail and sick, then you wouldn't want to use it because they couldn't heat it up. So the next thing that we're going to look at is a simple contrast bath. And maybe Abby, would you be my helper? Thank you. Okay, so a contrast bath is just that. It uses contrast between the hot and the cold like we've been talking about. And you can do it to any area of the body, again, that you're do, uh, needing to do. A lot of times, you come right on over and join me. Um, we, we might do it to the face for sinusitis. Um, its indications are for impaired circulation, inflammation, sprains, strains, traumas, sinusitis, infections, or osteoarthritis. And again, the contraindication would be diabetes because of the lack of feeling. So impaired circulation, because it is going to create like a pumping action. Remember, just like for our fomentations, you do the hot for how many seconds? Three, uh, I'm sorry, well, what's three times 60? No, you do the hot for three minutes and the cold for how many seconds? 30 seconds. So you'll have two basins. You can take those for me. And let's set them up right here on our bed. And we are going to stand behind it. Mm -hmm. So one of these is filled with hot and one of them has cold. And so if we needed to do it to her face, if she has sinusitis, if her nose is running and, or it's not running and that's a problem, she feels like she has a stuffy nose, what she's gonna do is one will be filled with hot and one with cold. And we'll always start with the hot so you can step over here and she's gonna put her face right down and in it, okay? Just pretend like you're putting your face in the bucket of hot water. Mm-hmm. And how long is she gonna hold it for? Three minutes. That's a long time to hold your breath, isn't it? And we don't want to, um, you know, if the child is uncomfortable with that, you can get a snorkel. Have you ever used a snorkel, Abby? That's fun, right? To go swimming in the beach and you can just look forever. Well, you can use a snorkel for this treatment. You put it in the mouth and put your face in and just count for 30 seconds. Or if you don't have a snorkel, you have your friend there with you and she will time. But anytime you need a breath, you just go and then you just put your face back in again. And then after three minutes, then you go over to the cold and you can put your face down in it for 30 seconds. You might add a little pinch of sea salt. And why would we add sea salt? Uh, not just sea salt, any kind of salt will do. Why would you add salt? Well, all of the mucous membranes of your body, that's good, you can stand up, are um, saline, which is a mixture basically of water and salt. And so it just makes it more comfortable for your nasal and your eyes, your nasal passages and just all those mucous membranes so it doesn't sting. Have you ever gotten water in your eyes before and they turn red and it doesn't feel very good? Well, just a little bit of salt, not a lot, it will help it to be more saline like your body. And so after you've gone back and forth, you want to actually make the hotter the hot water hotter and the cold water colder to the person's toleration. Now you don't just need to do this treatment for the face, but you can use for the hands. So say she um, sprained her wrist, she was jumping off of a tree. I know you're very athletic and things like that. So maybe you um, hurt your wrist from falling. So immediately after having an accident like that, you can do a contrast bath and that will help with um, the healing, bringing the good circulation to that. So go ahead and put one hand in the, in the hot and then after three minutes she'll move it to the cold and then um, go back and forth for how many exchanges, Abby? Um, seven. About seven. But after uh, a day or two of, the, of after a sprain, 
then it's better not to treat it with a contrast. It's better just to treat it with the cold because um, it will just increase the inflammation if you do it too long, if you have waited or you didn't get to do it immediately. Um, this is also very beneficial just for the feet. It stimulates circulation um, if you want to do a contrast to your feet to get your blood flowing. And remember, where the life of the flesh is in the blood. And so we want to um, promote that good circulation with these different treatments um, through that, and that way we can have perfect health. We know that perfect health is dependent on perfect circulation. And so as we look at how the blood gives life and health to every organ of our body, it reminds us of whose blood? Jesus' blood. And His blood, as it circulates to you and me, as it is poured out for us, that we can have life, we can thank Him and praise Him. And these treatments then can remind us of Him and always turn our attention to Him as everything should in our in the things that we do so thank you very much for your help abby and thank you very much for your time and your attention today tomorrow we're going to look a little bit more at uh, simple natural remedies and the kitchen cabinet remedies and some things that we can do in the home for uh, our continued healing and health let us pray and thank the lord for these things and ask him to help us to use them if you'll bow your heads with me mm. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much that you have provided so many uh, tools for our health and healing, so many remedies, that there is um, one whose blood was shed on Calvary, that we would, might have life and have it more abundantly. We ask, Father, that you would help us to have wisdom in applying these things and that you would help us to use them practically in our daily lives. Thank you so much for hearing our prayer today and for just the blessing of being here. And we pray um, all of these things in the name of Jesus, your Son. Amen.